when Adam alayhi salam, our father, and Hawa, Eve, left paradise, they turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And Allah azza wa jal inspired them with the words, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِلْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ O oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, then we will certainly be amongst the losers. Now here's the thing, Allah gave them the words of forgiveness. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the best way to seek forgiveness. And that in and of itself is a sign that Allah wants to forgive you. And I want you to think about the most forgiving person you have ever known in your life. And think about how quickly they forgive you the moment that you apologize. How quickly they relinquish a grudge, even if they had one, as soon as you say, I'm sorry. And those people are nothing compared to Al-Ghafoor, the off forgiving. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always willing to accept your apology. Now, istighfar, seeking forgiveness, is just one part of our wholesome package of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's essentially an admission of shortcoming that is verbalized. So istighfar is specific to the tongue. Nadm, which is regret, the Prophet Sallallahu said, and nadmu tawbah, that regret is tawbah, it is repentance. Nadm is how you feel. It's the true remorse that you have on the inside. Istighfar is what you say. Astaghfirullah, I seek your forgiveness, O Allah. Tawbah is what you do. It's the full repentance of turning back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This basically forms not just the beginning of the history of mankind when Adam alayhi salam and Eve leave paradise, but it forms the basis of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the very beginning, Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad rahimahullah was asked, what's more important, to do istighfar or to do tasbih? For us as human beings, is it more important for us to seek Allah's forgiveness or to glorify His perfection? Now obviously both are important, but he said, that think about a garment that you have and there's a stain on that garment. So if you got a white thobe and you got a coffee stain on it, what do you do with that garment? The priority is not to embellish that garment. The priority is to remove the stain. And so he said, Astaghfirullah, repentance, seeking Allah's forgiveness is removing the stain. All the other forms of dhikr are embellishing the garment. And so they're both important, but you have to get back to your origin and remove the stain on your heart and then turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ was so comprehensive. In one authentic hadith, when someone would embrace Islam, the first thing the Prophet ﷺ would teach him is salah. And then the Prophet ﷺ would teach him the following dua. Allahumma khirli, warhamni, wahdini, wa'afini, warzuqni. So it's such a comprehensive dua. It's a simple sentence. Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me, and guide me, and give me good health, and provide for me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, this is a dua that you should say to keep yourself busy with in the very beginning of your Islam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you never get past seeking Allah's forgiveness. There's always going to be a reason for seeking Allah's forgiveness. And that's not just because you are going to keep sinning. It's because you're never going to do good enough to meet what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for you. And that's the istighfar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. The istighfar of feeling naqs, of feeling deficiency. Now think about it in, in the capacity of everything that we've spoken about. You know how perfect Allah is. You've praised Allah for all of His blessings upon you. And you know that no matter what you do in return, you're never going to do quite enough. And so you always feel a sense of regret. And that's why when you finish salah, you didn't do anything wrong. You did the best thing you could possibly be doing when you prayed. But you say, astaghfirullah, 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 right away. Why? Because perhaps some of my salah was lost. I, maybe I was distracted. And even if I wasn't distracted, then surely I have not repaid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors upon me. And so everyone is in a state of istighfar. Some are seeking forgiveness for the deficiency in their good. Some are seeking forgiveness for their sins. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he said, that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises, al-mustaghfirina bil-ashar, those who are seeking Allah's forgiveness in the last part of the night, that he's speaking to two different categories of people who are both making istighfar. He said, you have those who wake up in the very last part of the night 
to seek forgiveness with a small prayer. And then you have the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have already prayed a portion of the night and they're seeking forgiveness at the end of their worship. They're both praiseworthy, but he says their istighfar is not the same. You have the istighfar of the lovers and you have the istighfar of the sinners. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa of course, is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after a long night of prayer, he would still seek Allah's forgiveness. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, O oh people, I seek Allah's forgiveness at least a hundred times a day. And Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah, he said, that's the minimum from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a single gathering seeking Allah's forgiveness more than a hundred times. But he's saying that I seek Allah's forgiveness at least a hundred times a day. What does that mean for the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And it wasn't just with one word or one phrase. You see, astaghfirullah. You see, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him. You see, Rabbi khfirli, my Lord, forgive me. Or what Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma heard the Prophet sallallahu saying throughout a gathering, Rabbi khfirli wa tub alayya, innaka anta tawwabur rahim. My Lord, forgive me and have mercy upon me. You are the acceptor of repentance. You are the most merciful. And the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever says, astaghfirullah al-azim, alladhi la ilaha illa hu, al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayh. I seek the forgiveness of Allah, the most mighty, whom there is none worthy of worship except him, the ever living, the ever eternal. And I repent to him. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says this form of istighfar, Allah will forgive him even if he had deserted the ranks of the Muslim's army. And that is, of course, one of the most severe sins to flee the battlefield. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that to repent to Allah wholesomely in this way forgives you even for that. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even when you sit together, he said, when people sit and they speak in a gathering and they end that gathering by saying, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory is to you, O Allah, and all praise is to you. We bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but you, and we seek your forgiveness and we repent to you. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ghufira lahu ma kana fi majlisihi dhak. That anything that was said in that gathering will be forgiven bi ta'ala. And he said the best form of istighfar, the best form of seeking forgiveness, it's called Sayyidul Istighfar, the master of seeking forgiveness. If you say it in the evening and you die, or you say it in the morning and you die, the Prophet ﷺ said, you are certainly from the people of Jannah. Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma stata'atu, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya, wa abu'u laka bi dhanbi, faghfir li, fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. O oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no God but you. You created me and I am your slave. And I am abiding by your promise and your covenant to the greatest extent possible. I admit to you your blessings upon me and I admit to you my shortcomings. So forgive me because no one forgives sins except for you. So you have an admission of all the good that Allah has given to you and an admission of the times that you've fallen short in your response. And the Prophet said, if you say that and you die, you will be from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. So again, when it comes to istighfar, do it after you commit a sin. Do it even when you think about something that's sinful. Do it after you do a good deed out of feeling a sense of deficiency. Do it when someone praises you, as we learn as well, that when someone says something about you, seek Allah's forgiveness because you know that there are certain things about you that are not necessarily what others may think of you. And when you feel stress, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is narrated to have said, مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ That whoever is consistent with seeking Allah's forgiveness, Allah will appoint for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety, and Allah will provide for him from where he would have never thought he would be provided from. And you find from the Prophet ﷺ something so beautiful. He says, Innahu la yughanu ala qalbi. So, you know, sometimes my heart feels foggy. I feel like there's a fog 
over my heart. And so I seek Allah's forgiveness in a day a hundred times. Istighfar is what removes the fog. It's what provides clarity. It's what removes all of the stress and the anxiety. And it's what connects us to the most perfect, even when we know how imperfect we are.